welcome to Homeopathic Voices from Around the World with me, Atik Ahmed Bhatti. I'm delighted to have Ian White, who is the founder of the Australian Bush Flower Essences, who is going to be joining me uh, very, very shortly. And uh, it's going to be a really big honour to have Ian on the on the live, actually, and to talk about all things to do with the Australian Bush Flower Essences, but also, more importantly, up in the UK and we're going to talk in some detail about that. <clears throat> Hi Ian. Hello there. Welcome um, to everyone listening too. <laughs> so uh, as I uh, was just mentioning, um, it's uh, really a great honour to have Ian White join us today on Homeopathic Voices. For those who aren't aware, Ian is a homeopath, but he, more importantly, he is the founder of uh, the Australian Bushflower Essences, and he is also a fifth generation herbalist. And um, Ian has actually been, my good fortune was that Ian was on the Homeopathy Health podcast uh, on episode 40. So you can go to any podcast platform um, or just type in Homeopathy Health with Atik uh, online and search for episode 40 and uh, you'll be able to listen to Ian's journey. Uh, fascinating indeed. And uh, I must actually also remember to say belated congratulations because you are a grandfather. So congratulations, Ian. Uh, thank you, Atik. Yes, <clears throat> great Wonderful. joy. Wonderful. So grandchildren, the sun, surfing. I mean, life's great. <laughs> <laughs> life's very good indeed. Um, so Ian, uh, we... For those who perhaps are not aware, and those who listen back, of course, uh, to the live on YouTube and on Instagram, um, I had the good fortune again to have Ian back on the podcast. So we've done that recording. It's in the can, and it will be scheduled for uh, in a few months' time. And we're actually talking about two specific essences in that podcast, which is uh, dog's rose, uh, uh, sorry, dog rose and bush fuchsia. And Ian shares his incredible incredible insights i mean uh, it's an episode not to be missed it really is so so educational but what is today about today is about <clears throat> ian talking about his workshops there's a number of international workshops now it's nothing new ian travels the world um throughout the year actually and um it's about opening up about talking about the australian bush flower essences and how they can help people in various walks and stages of life. So, um, Ian, if you could really share about the upcoming workshops, because I know they're not just in the UK, but they're further afield as well, including Japan. Wow. <laughs> yeah, so usually uh, beginning of May to mid-July, I'm teaching in Europe and finishing in Japan in that uh, late July period. And I know you've got listeners from all around the world. Yeah. so. This particular trip starts in Dublin. So I'm going to be uh, teaching a one-day workshop on mental health and the bush essences. And uh, uh, that's going to be on the 9th of Thursday, the 9th of May. So in that topic, I'll be looking at, at conditions such as anxiety, depression, mm. um, uh, addictions, uh, eating disorders, uh, self-harm and talking a little bit about it, strategies, and of course then tying in with the bush essences, which ones are gonna be very specific in helping people who are dealing with these problems. And uh, so we've got the whole day to really go in and, and explore it in, in great detail. So that, that's quite an exciting one. I've done, you know, I've been employed, not employed, but um, in Natal in Brazil, they actually had this, the Natal government paid for nurses, doctors, uh, counsellors to come and do that workshop, mm. which was great. Mm. And, um, you know, so we, uh, it, it's a very popular one. I think everyone is so acutely aware that since COVID, the level of anxiety, and especially anyone under the age of 30, it is just so rampant today. And, and the same for depression. You know, like it's it's that and Alzheimer's are probably going to be the two most common 
uh, health conditions that people will be working with and, and treating in this, you know, these next coming decade at least. So, you know, it's good to know that there are some very safe, effective treatments that can be used and, and utilised. So, you know, I'll be talking about that, going through a lot of case studies as well, emphasising, showing how they work. It's interesting then, um, you mentioned, yeah. because we, we, sp we speak about this in, in the podcast that we've just recently um, recorded about anxiety and how important it is to deal with it because it can become it can become very life-changing um, if it's left untreated isn't it and this is where the bush mm -hmm. essence has come in to give that that vibe that the correct vibration to be able to balance and be able to go back out without feeling that fear and that um, that sadness really isn't it it's almost the anxiety is there but there's also this element of inside where you feel very, very sad, you know, unable to move on. Yeah, it's a very strong sense of trapped and just like, <clears throat> just can't get on with your life. Yeah. And, um, you know, tying in with that is, you know, again, tying back to COVID as well, the, the lack of social contact with people. And mm -hmm. this on top of the fact that, you know, so many households, you know, it's, it's, you know, over 30% of households in most Western countries are single occupants. So people are isolated, you know, in their living situation. Homes are getting bigger, but people are being more isolated. Mm -hmm. And then you throw in something like anxiety and then it just, it seems to compound it. Absolutely. Also. Now, the exciting news, though, for me, certainly, uh, is May the 11th and 12th and the May the 13th. And you're going to be in the UK and... I'm going to be a special guest, aren't I? <laughs> you are. You're, you're. <laughs> well, I've got to invite the best uh, interviewer <laughs> around oh, to come to those you. workshops. Yeah. So I'll be doing a level two workshop where we do a levels one, two, and three, and we cover a third of the bush essences in each of those workshops. Um, and we'll also be you know, going to detail about the most recent bush essence called Colophyllum, the first new bush essence in 19 years. So it's not me getting bored, nothing to do. I go and make an essence, really waiting for the flower to come through and connect and say it's time. Mm. And the level twos, it's a lot of information. We go into a lot of depth with the essences, but there's also, I'm looking at more the spiritual aspect of the plants, the metaphysics behind making an essence, the Davic realm, the um, nature spirits, their role working with the plant. Mm. Uh, we'll be tuning in how to develop your sensitivity to pick up energies from flowers. And there's a, you know, something I think practitioners will find very beneficial. It's called the closed eyes process. I use it all the time in my practice. When someone's coming in with a physical problem, a short, easy technique to help the person work it out for themselves. What's the trigger? What's the causative factors behind their physical symptom? So we'll be practicing that so people will be quite confident by, you know, when they leave the, the workshop that they can, um, you know, incorporate that into their toolkit as a, as a practitioner. And we'll also be looking at uh, five steps of abundance. Now, not just through avarice and greed, but like if you're financially well looked after, you can afford to do the things you really want to do. Because I know that there's a number of um, homeopaths, flower essence practitioners love to be doing it full time, but, you know, like just having enough that financial freedom, which they can let go of the job, giving them maybe a little bit of security so they can focus full time. And, mm. um, you know, like if, you, if, if you're listening to this and your employer or, you know, the government, if you're self-employed, was to send you a check for, you know, a million pounds, would you go back doing the work that you're currently doing? Or you think, great, I'm out of here. Mm. So if you're in the latter category, this is a great one to help get clear about, you know, what you, where you're going and give you that financial steps to achieve that. So that's all, you know, a different aspect within the, in the workshop. There's also meditations there as well. And then that's the weekend. And we're doing outside work as well with the plants. And there'll be, when we cover the essences, as well as, uh, the PowerPoint showing you the flower and the different aspects of the doctrine of signatures. I'll also be showing you the landscapes where they grow because we'll be looking at plants that grow in the very top end, the tropical area of Australia, alpine mm. flowers, um, you know, like it's uh, the desert. So it's vast um, 
continent and there's a lot of very different ecosystems and the plants come from all these different areas so you know you get a, a greater understanding of why that plant works in this way when you see not just the flower but also the environment where it's growing you know i was just going to ask you although we've spoken about this in episode 40 of the homeopathy health podcast and we've spoken about it just recently again for for the one we recorded but for those that will listen to this uh, or again after the live as well do explain or give an example of, you know, the time that is required sometimes, because I know you've narrated several times the fact that, you know, you've traveled for two days, you've walked for God knows how many hours of driven, and then it wasn't fulfilling enough or it wasn't the right time and you had to come back. I think you mentioned in the podcast recently, the one we've recorded, that you forgot or something broke and then you had to start all over again. So I think that's fascinating because it shows the commitment and what goes into producing an essence it's not, not that easy it's not just pick a flower and off you go or grow you know going into your garden and growing something yeah. no and like i like to find growing in the wild so their life force is strong you know we've had bad floods in the last 18 months in many parts of australia if we go back three four years earlier we had horrendous fires going through there yeah. so for the plants to survive in those harsh conditions they've got to have a strong life force and that's the plants that I'm working with. And I think the homeopaths will really enjoy this flower, Boab. It's, um, it's working um, on so many of the miasms. It's, it's I would say it's the deepest acting of the bush essences. Mm. And uh, you see Herring's law coming through so often in working with, you know, um, Boab. And it's really clearing those ancestral patterns coming down generation after generation. And so many people are really working not only clearing their own things but really clearing out what's what's been unaddressed in that family lineage for for such a long time so to get to boab it's on the west coast of australia i'm on the east coast so it's a five-hour flight hopefully there's some connecting flights after waiting a couple of hours at the airport it's another three hour flight to get up to wow. beautiful part of the world called Broome, which is right on the kimberley coastline and then it's a two and a half hour drive to get to the boabs and as you told the story which uh, i still cringe a little bit when when i hear it or talk about it is that they were really late coming into flower that year so we spent a number of days and all the boabs were not in flower i tended to work with one called the prison tree and um you know like there was this the day i met it uh made it, it was a huge cyclone we're trying to race it to finish the essence i got back to broom the airport was closed because of the cyclone was so strong and um i was picking up a, a a book i was reading there in the house i was staying and it said um humanity has been in chains for thousands of years and uh you know the thing we need to do is to clear the negative family patterns i thought was that perfect today i've made um you know boab so yeah we had to wait till the following year do the same you know all that big mm. trip again yeah it's and, uh, yeah oh I was, I was just going to say we you know we talked about level two on the monday which will be the 11th of may in london um lovely venue called Roots and Shoots, which are some great outdoor areas. We'll be doing women's well-being in the bush essences, really starting from when a girl starts menstruation, marking that beginning of womanhood right yeah. through to the, she leaves the planet and um, essences which can help along all the various stages. So there's, you know, it could be um, painful periods, irregular periods, infertility, dealing with sexuality, um, conception, essences throughout the, the uh, pregnancy you know dealing things like miscarriages you know incompetent cervix all sorts of different things mm. and then coming to what essences can help at the labor in fact i'm writing a newsletter now because and i'm writing a lot about you know my daughter and her the birth and all the essences that we used at the time and then you know like motherhood now of course 25 percent of women don't have children so it's not just focused on on that aspect we're looking at career we're looking at menopause uh, common health issues that women have where it's urinary tract infections you know it could be strokes heart disease cancer all sorts of different things and what would be the essences mm. which are very appropriate in dealing with that death and dying all sorts of areas we'll be exploring in that one day workshop you mentioned 
mentioned um, there will be some outdoor work as well. What, what does that incorporate as far as flowers and outdoor work? Um, well, we'll be working with that realm of the nature spirits and divas, and we'll also be doing some energy work, how you can tune in and feel the energy coming from the plants. Like when I'm making an essence, I'll always ask permission before I pick the flower. And it's, Interesting, I, I ask which ones want to be used and some will shake and vibrate and you can see them. It's almost saying, pick me, pick me, I'm the strongest, I'm the best. And with this technique, I show how you can feel the energy. And when I do that, the ones which were shaking really have a huge aura about them. And, you know, it's that, you know, part of the plant's, you know, reason for being here is to offer this healing gift to humanity. And... Sometimes, the, you know, I've got the sense the plant saying, oh, finally someone's realised what I'm doing here, you know, what I, this gift that I've got for humankind. And, mm. yeah. Wonderful. So. Wonderful. You, you know, Ian, you're a living legend. Absolute delight always, you know. You're so inspiring. Oh. And um, I think these workshops are so, so important, you know. And if you really want to know about the bush essences, this is, I mean, you've got to hear it from the legend and the master. So... You know, this is an, a very, very good opportunity. Um, now, there's a very interesting workshop coming up in May, which is about numerology and ABFE. So do share. When I started studying uh, my naturopathy and homeopathy back in the 1970s, I also started studying numerology at the same time. And, you know, I, I, I use it with every patient I've ever treated. Mm -hmm. For me, the beauty is, you know, if I get someone's birth date, within 15 seconds, you can do the chart up. Straight away, you see the strengths, the challenges that person has. And, uh, you know, like it, it's just a great tool for understanding people. We've just been helping uh, uh, the daughter of some very good friends of ours. She's 22 and she's been going through a whole lot of mental health issues and, uh, you know, was running away and sleeping rough on the streets and, and, and she's a ruling seven. Sevens don't like being told things. They want to experience it. And, like, mm. and they do have more challenges than most people, but their attitude is, you know, like, uh, I just want to experience life the form. That's what she was saying as part of it. And, you know, Jay and I, my wife, you know, we did a chart and just looking at each other, classic ruling seven. So you understand why people are behaving in some of those ways. But then I'll show you to um, how to do a chart, what the individual numbers on there means. What, what does it mean if you've got three ones? Well, it's a very chatty person. What about if there's only a single one? Well, they're only going to have trouble talking about their feelings. Mm. You know, if there's a lot of fives in the birth date, stress is going to go straight to their solar plexus, for example. So we'll, And there's year cycles. There's a nine-year cycle. Each year there's a certain energy available to you. So if you're in a year three, it's a mental yeah, you like if you were going to be studying homeopathy, you know, you'd find you progress more in that year than any of the other eight years in that cycle. There's some years where it's really good to be clearing through emotional things. Other times it's time to consolidate, you know, look look after the physical body. Um, you know, like there's a year where it's a great one for the family home, creativity. So if you know what energy is available to you, you can focus on it and get the best benefits. You know, there's a lovely quote from Shakespeare that there is a time if taken at the tide in the affairs of men will lead to great riches. And this is, that's exactly knowing what's the energy available to me this year. If I focus on, I'm going to get great rewards. More so than if I spend that focus on the same thing in other years in that cycle. And of course, I'm going to be showing, depending on the patterns and the numbers, which bush essences would be appropriate to help balance that one. Wow, that sounds so, so fascinating. And, and know, that's going to be in France. So if someone brilliant. wants a holiday and, and uh, decides in the south of France, so if you're thinking, oh, gee, I'm just slowly coming out, out after winter and I might go for a sunnier climate, or they can um, come to Japan where I think we're going to be doing the uh, kinesiology workshop. Yep. Yes, uh, so, that's, uh, in July, isn't yep. it, in Japan? Yep. In yeah. Japan. So if you're, you know, thinking, yeah, I'm going to really want to experience a different culture and have a bit of fun and write this uh, trip off as a tax expense to the exchequer, and <laughs> then that could be a nice one. In fact, you know, I'm, 
I'm teaching for the first time in Romania. I'm doing a level one there. You know, I'm teaching in Bulgaria. We've got four days in Italy. Yeah. I'm doing uh, workshops in Germany. So um, yeah, yeah, that's so, pretty much June. June is Italy, and then you've got. I'm just looking at the chart as well. So uh, you've got Romania in June and uh, Bulgaria again, and then July is Japan. And just before that, of course, in May, you've got the UK, like we've mentioned, Belgium and Germany and France. So, wow, that's a, a really busy schedule. But I think it's a, it's, it's an amazing time, isn't it, to be able to be using the bush flower essences. It's, it's it such, is. It, it's so much the right time, isn't it? Yeah, look, they've, they're really, my, my role is really to get out, show people the scope, the potential of what they can do for healing and, and get that healing out, I think. Uh, it's it's very much needed at this point in time. Mm. Um, so, Ian, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on. And in fact, as we are live, when you are live in the UK, um, hopefully I'm going to be there anyway. So maybe we can do a live from there as well. Hey, that would be a first, wouldn't it? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. That'd be I great. Think you, I look forward to doing this that. This is a world exclusive, isn't it? <laughs> it is indeed. <laughs> uh, in closing, what would your, and I know I asked you this in the podcast, but obviously that's a few months down the line, but for those who are listening to this and of course will listen back, um, what's your advice for those really finding themselves stuck in, stuck in a rut or just feeling very overwhelmed with what life is throwing at, at all of us? We're, we're all faced with trials and tribulations, right? Each day is, is a wave, literally, isn't it? Ups and downs and happiness and joy and trauma and sadness and it's such a complex uh, life that we now have. Certainly it wasn't like this 50, 60 years ago. You knew what you wanted to do and life was, dare I say it, relatively simple. And now it's just always rush, rush, it's on, isn't it? It's not good for the adrenals, it's not good for the mind. So what would your advice be to, to those going through such situations? Look, you know, there were a number of um, international teachers who, who made the claim, this is going back, you know, well over 30 years ago, that compared back then, a person compared to their, their grandparents was probably having about, processing about three times as much as what happened in the life of their grandparents. And I, I would say that's just quadrupled again. You know, the intensity, the things, the speed of which things are happening today. And... You know, as I said, there's a, there's a lot of overwhelm. I actually brought out a combination remedy called 2024, which was dealing with all the energies going on around the, the moment. And and certainly the overwhelm, you, you said, is is addressed in that. The dog rose for some of that anxiety. I mean, there's very positive things. There's so much spiritual energy flooding down through at the moment. Mm. Um, so, uh, you know, that's a good thing. On, on the outside, the essences. And I think I might have mentioned in number 40 with you, our interview, first interview, you know, having, having that grounding spiritual practice. Now, whether it's prayer, whether it's meditation, it, it's really important just to sort of let go. It's to recharge. It's that nurturing the soul, getting that communication from your higher self where your guidance is. Mm. And that could be something very practical. Maybe in your work you get this aha moment. It's going to save you so much time and stress or, you know, just in, uh, in your life. And having that 20 minutes a day is all it means, you know. And, and if we make that a priority, it's easy to get it every day. You just, you know, a couple of things you can leave out, you know, like 20 minutes, maybe you have a quicker shower. Maybe you, you know, you, you don't dawdle so much or, you, you know, you watch 20 minutes less TV, whatever it might be. 20 minutes is enough to get that. Um, connection with your own higher self, get your own inner guidance. Being physically active, you know, is really important. And um, simple things like getting plenty of sleep. I mean, mm. basic things that people need to be doing, having contact, having, you know, time out with friends. You know, if you haven't got family around you, then then have your friends, like developing those close personal connections. Um, you know, I, you know, Food, nurturing yourself. I mean, we look at, you know, the essences, remedies like five corners to feel good about yourself. So you, you take the, you deserve to eat good foods. Maybe you deserve to have organic, even though it might cost you a little bit more. Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, 
those nurturing things we do for ourselves. I mean, they're, they're, they're really simple, basic things we can do, you know, more of a Mediterranean diet, for example, you know, mm. less, less sugars and, you know, you know, fried food and a bit more wholesome food, you know, simple, simple things we can do that don't take too much time and effort, you know, the meditation, the exercise, connecting with friends, finding what it is that you really love to do, mm. you know, like, like, you know, if, if I sent you off that, you know, check for a million pounds, I think I'm sure you're going to be still, you know, doing your interviews, doing your podcast, still treating people because you've found what you really love. Yeah. And, you know, it's a very important thing. And, you know, we have essences to help people when then they, they're not quite sure where the next step is. or haven't found that passion, you know, and it's to me, and I'm sure, you know, people listening, if they're practitioners, have had patients come in and, and express that, I know there's something I'm supposed to be doing, I don't know what it is. And when that person finds it, there's such a sense of joy and relief. You know, it's, you're absolutely right about the check. Um, but if you want to, hey, if you want to send, want to it, send over, it anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to say no to that. But um, you, you're so, so right that, you know, when you find something that you love, just like yourself, of course, you know, you there is no way you would leave that, you know, irrespective no. of how wealthy one can become or what other situations they may find themselves in, because it just balances you as a person, doesn't it? You feel good. It makes it gives you that drive to wake up and to look forward to that day, you know, because you love what you do. And it's so, so true, isn't it? Yeah. It's not just... We, we've just... all got special gifts and ability. There's always, there's, you know, we've all chosen to come and, and do things and expand ourselves. And, and again, like with the essences, it's giving you that confidence and courage to really follow that desire and, and that passion, you know? So because sometimes it does take a little bit of work to, you know, like, you know what you want, but oh, that's a bit overwhelming. I, don't, <laughs> I think I'll stay in the comfort zone, not push myself. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, how many, approximately how many essences are there now? Um, there was 69 for 19 years. And, and as of last year, there's the 70th, the one oh. colophon, which is very much a, an essence for the time. I'm talking about getting out of your comfort zone. This is a, a strong sense of knowing where you're going, that tenacity not to be put off and, but not just going yourself. It's like, okay, this is the way, but bringing others with you. Mm. You know, like, come on, this is where we're going. And, and you know, it, it, it doesn't relate to age. You don't have to be, you know, a, a person with, you know, 40, 50 years experience in your field to be a leader. You can have a teenager, you know, that, you know, you can have someone in their 20s, 30s, but it, it's that sense of, come on, yeah, I've got something I've got to do and I'm going, this is where we're going and this is really important for you know, the planet and you know, it's, it's metaphysical is a big challenge going on at the moment. There are, you know, forces who would like to control us, take away a lot of liberty, etc. So we need to be aware of what's going on as well. And then also, you know, be strong and resilient to um, go where you, you sense you need to do. Was it, um, was it quite difficult to source uh, Colophyllum? Well, it was, um, a beautiful area. It's the only part in the world where there are two World Heritage sites side by side. So the Great Barrier Reef Ooh. and the Rainforest in very far north Queensland. And I, um, Jay and I had, had a trip up there. We weren't intending to make an essence on the very last day. He came across the tree and just yelled at me and gave me meditate, spend a lot of time. We've got all the information. And so that was in 22. In 23, um, it was my, because of all the travel restrictions being lifted, it was the first time I had an opportunity to come back to Europe. Mm. And I was coming back in July and I wasn't sure if the flower would still be out then. Now I was leaving in, uh, in April, early April, and I wasn't sure if, if it would still, it would be in flower. Like there was a bit of a, a limbo period because I'd seen it in late May and and then I thought, oh, it's getting hectic. It's a long trip. I was so much packing, so much organising to do. And I thought, I'll just leave it till, you know, 2024. And in meditation that night, they really gave me a good psychic kick up the backside and saying, it needs to be made. You're making it now. And it's just like, because again, it was, you know, it's a three hour flight there. And then there's another three hour drive. And 
you know, you've got to allow enough time because it might be raining and needs sunshine to prepare the essences. So it's a you know, tropical area. So I've got to find it, make sure I can find one in flower. And um, yeah, so, you know, it's those extra days and I just said, okay, you've got to do it. And fortunately, the, the same tree it grows right on the coastline um, was in flower. A lot of the others, and they're very tall trees, they can be up to 30 metres tall for non-metric people, you know, 90 feet tall, massive trees. Oh, yeah. And yeah. some of them were very in flower <laughs> near the top, but not at ground level while I was making it. So this tree was perfect. And, um, you know, the branches, they're, they're covered with sand for a couple of metres and they pop out again. It's like that tenacity, you know, just a flesh root and still keep yeah. going. And, um, yeah, it's a... And the flowers on the, the racine, that flowering head, there's one at the top and then followed by all the others. And, um, yes, it's uh, very much that sense of leader, but all the rest coming through. And, of course, the other thing with this essence is that it's helping with tolerance. We've reached a point, and it has been manipulated a lot by the media, where, like, if you're in the United States... When you meet someone, you straight away say, I'm a Democrat, I'm a Republican. You, you put your, draw, draw this line in the sand. And people, if they are from the opposite party, they won't talk to you. They won't mm. communicate. Dismiss you as being an idiot. Um, and and we've, we've, we have that now. Oh, you know, like, oh, you got vaccinated. You're a fool. Or you didn't. You're just putting the whole community at risk. I mean, there's where before we would communicate, someone's got a different point of view, just talking about it and so on. Mm. Why, why, why do you vote for Trump? Or why did you choose to get vaccinated? Like listening to what their story is and, and not being just dismissing. And, and I think that's a really important area we're getting. We're getting into this um, such divisions and intolerance mm. with mm. people's point of view. And sometimes, Ian, it's over some such petty things, isn't it? Uh, like you said, you know, which party do you... I mean, it really, at the end of the day, in the grand scheme of things, it means nothing, you know? Yeah. And uh, and yet people will, uh, you know, people will sort of break up relationships and friendships over it. And really, when you think about it, you think, what's wrong? What, what are you doing? What's wrong with you? You know, <laughs> hey, the connection is still there. You're still, you're still the same person. And yet, just by uttering even a sentence or a word, I mean, how powerful are words, right? Yeah. And they can completely change your perception and, and all of a sudden you can become very defensive or, or even very angry, I suppose. Yeah, so, yeah, interesting times we're living in, Attic. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Um, now, surfing. We, we got to, and actually, before we go there, uh, if anyone has, <clears throat> excuse me, if anyone has any questions for Ian, uh, those who are certainly on live, uh, please... Uh, uh, send through the comments and uh, Ian will be happy to answer them on the Bushflower Essences or certainly on the upcoming workshops starting in May. But uh, just in closing, I <clears throat> wanted to ask you about surfing because I know you are a surfer um, and you absolutely love it. So what's that like? It must be so exhilarating, right? Well, you have surfing on surfboards and then you have body surfing, which is not so popular among young, young people. They get into boogie boards and surfboards. So... I much prefer body surfing. So you have a pair of fins or flippers on your feet so you can go out, catch waves when the, you know, above your head. I have a, a, a hand plane, you strap it on your hand so it pushes you out of the water so you cut across the wave like a surfboard does. Right. And, you know, like I'm very fortunate from my house, I can look down, I can see what the beach is, what the waves are like, the conditions are. And it just takes me a couple of minutes to get down there. And there's a real um, body surfing community. My beach is called Avalon. It has one of the best surfs in Sydney. And, you know, we have uh, three men in their 80s, probably about uh, eight in their 70s. And there's a few young whippersnippers like myself in the 60s. So, you know, and every day we'll be out there. And, you know, sometimes there's very big swell. And, you know, these are very competent people. You know, we can go out and, and big surf and, and have fun. And, um, yeah, so it's a real passion. It's a, quite a wonderful thing to... I, I, I think for men, you know, to test yourself is important. So... To know your boundaries, think, well, this is really crazy. You know, it's 20-foot surf. No, that's too dangerous. 
but you know just to feel the power of nature and and the surf and knowing that you can you know play with it and have fun there and get a lot of joy that's nice that is you must send a video and i'll share it on socials okay surfing yeah now I when think... you come to australia you, you will have to get you out into the water and have a few body surfing lessons as well <laughs> oh my god yeah well i'll definitely if if i'm in your safe hands i'll do it otherwise i wouldn't <laughs> yeah you'll be in my safe hands we'll have a, a group of people looking after yeah. you uh, we have a, a question from uh jennifer sorry it's I, I, it's very small writing that's why uh, so jennifer she says, hi, I took dog rose recently and it was excellent. What would be a good follow-up essence, Ian? Mm, well, it's a little bit hard, uh, Jennifer. I'm not quite sure what the condition was that you were mm. working with because dog rose is working on fear, anxiety. It's also very good for people who are a little bit shy. Um, so, uh, yes. So, look... We mentioned Boab. Boab can be a very nice remedy to, as, as, a, as a deep acting one. Some of the, in the level two workshop, we talk about a flower called Sturt Desert Pea. Shyness, and uh, Ian, it says for shyness. Oh, yeah. for shyness. Oh, okay, great. Just well, then I, the th there is a combination called Confid. So dog roses and that, also a remedy called Five Corners, which is self-esteem, self-worth. And I think you know, if, if people are honest, they would, everyone would say there's been periods in their lives when they had lack of confidence or low self-esteem. And so Five Corners is a really lovely one to, to boost that up. And I think it works hand in hand very much with the dog rose. And that other flower I was talking about, Sturt Desert Pea, is a remedy for grief and sadness. And I think you've only got to go on any high street and look in people's eyes and see how much sadness there is. And, you know, we, we tend to hold on to resentment and sadness, the two most common emotions people hold on to. So taking some Sturt Desert is a really nice one to release any old grief and sadness that you're holding on to. Thank you. Um, and uh, forgive me if I misspell or mispronounce rather your name, but uh, the next uh, question is just um, about the workshops from uh, uh, Christina. Uh, any it, are any workshops available online for those who are not able to attend in person, meaning live? Yeah. So if if you were to go to the Bush Essence website, which is ozflowers, a u s flowers dot com dot a u, <laughs> just about every workshop except for the kinesiology, which is a very hands on. We need to show you and teach you how to do that. Is available as an online workshop. So. Um, yeah, so, you know, if you're living in an area or a country I'm not visiting, there, there is that nice option that you can do them online, which, and, which is great. A lot of people like, you know, doing it at their own pace at home without having to travel somewhere. Yeah. Wonderful. Um, Ian White, it's been an absolute honour, honestly, truly speaking. I think, uh, you know, the work that you do is just so, so, so important. And thank you so very much, actually, for, for what you do, because... It's changing so many lives. And um, for those who want to know more about Ian, of course, go to ozflowers.com.au. That's the official website. You can also go to ozflowers uh, on Instagram. Just search for AUS flowers and it will come up. Uh, you can see some of the videos that are being posted up on the real section with Ian out in the Australian Outback uh, and various other locations um, talking about the flower and the, the flowers rather and the essences. Uh, if you search for homeopathy health with Atik online on all the podcast platforms or just go to ukhealthradio.com or even my website, which where you'll find all the links to what I'm saying are in my bio on Instagram. Search for episode 40. That's where Ian White was my guest. Um, and of course, he's coming back in. We've already recorded the podcast and it'll be out in a couple of months time. And we talk about two specific ess essences in that as well. Um, but yeah, it's been uh, it's been an absolute honour, and uh, I very much look forward to seeing you finally live face to face in May. I'm really looking forward to that, you know, because yeah, me the too. virtual world, hey, it's good, but I need to meet people. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. nice to give you a hug, and um, thank you for all all your great work too, uh, Tegan. It's been a real pleasure talking with you to, tonight, thank my you. time. Thank you so much, and uh, I'll see you very very soon. Thanks, Atik. Okay. Bye bye. Yeah.
Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye.